All right, welcome or uh, welcome back. A new series of videos where I try to rapidly review uh, recently published randomized trials. Um, this was the attention trial, uh, trial of endovascular treatment of acute basilar artery occlusion, uh, published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Uh, the bottom line is that endovascular thrombectomy, so you know, removing that clot that's causing a stroke um, within 12 hours, led to way better functional out outcomes at 90 days um, compared to best medical therapy alone, but was associated with an increased risk of procedural complications and intracerebral hemorrhage. So the methods for this study, uh, the population was um, adults in China with a basilar artery occlusion causing stroke. The intervention was thrombectomy, the comparator, just standard of care. The outcome was good functional status, uh, identified using what's called the Rankin scale. And the time point for that assessment was 90 days following the stroke. So yes, this was randomized. That's incredibly helpful to make sure measured and unmeasured confounders are balanced at the time of randomization. Uh, it was unclear if allocation was concealed. Uh, this was multi-centered. For single-centered studies, you get worried about spurious findings and generalizability. Um, it was not blinded. The patients knew what they were getting. Uh, their physicians knew what they were getting, um, but outcome adjudication was blinded. There was no sham control. Um, they analyzed the data using intention to treat, which is almost always the right approach for randomized trials. It was not industry funded. I would certainly say this is a relevant outcome. This is an outcome that patients care about, the level of disability, and the loss to follow-up was low. So they screened 507 patients, 340 were randomized, uh, mean follow-up of 90 days, and less than 1% were lost to follow-up. The patients, what did they look like? Average age of 67, 65% were men, 30% um, got TPA, and that was balanced in the two groups, and the median um, NIH stroke scale is 24, so that's like a pretty moderate to severe stroke we're talking here. So how about this primary outcome? What did they find? Well, again, they use this modified Rankin scale. So zero means no disability. Contrast that with six, which means death. So what you can see is that there were of overall um, more patients in the thrombectomy group, all right, that had low levels of disability. That's really impressive. And the way we can sort of report that is 46% um, in the thrombectomy group compared to 23% in the control group. So that's like a 23% absolute risk improvement um, if you got thrombectomy. In terms of secondary outcomes, there was a lower risk of death for the individuals that got thrombectomy, um, but there was a higher um, rate of intracranial hemorrhage, so 5% in the thrombectomy group and none in the control. Procedural complications, so that was um, affecting 14% of patients, um, and those included arterial dissections or perforations. Some key limitations, this was an unblinded uh, study, and it was a relatively small sample size. However, there was this accompanying trial published in the New England Journal of Medicine, very similar patient population, um, also had basilar artery uh, stroke, and it showed really impressive benefits. So I think this is the real deal. Uh, you know, bottom line here, I think endovascular thrombectomy really needs to be considered for all patients presenting with a basilar artery occlusion. Definitely if it's within 12 hours of their stroke onset, and maybe even longer than that based on other studies. Uh, and it's important that patients are aware that there is an increased risk of procedural complications and bleeding with this. Uh, hope this was helpful. If you liked it, uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks. Bye.